Hey Mariah, I wanted to give you some feedback on this activity in a video, so hopefully it'll make a little more sense. Um, so when we're talking about Mateo's taco truck, it says um, the taco truck charges $4 for a taco. So that's their average or what they start at. It sells an average of 60 tacos in a day with every $1 increase in the price. The number of tacos sold per day decreases by seven. The owner calculates the daily revenue, so the amount that they actually make, um, using the polynomial negative 7x squared plus 32x plus 240, where x is the number of $1 increases in the taco price. Okay, so if we look here, what is the constant term in the polynomial? What does it represent? So you're perfectly right that 240 is the constant because there's no x here, but what does it represent? So um, in this case, when we have a polynomial like this, um, the constant is the number that you get when you put in zeros for the x's, right? So if I put in zero here and zero here, then these would cancel out to zero and we'd end up with 240. So what this represents, what 240 means, is that's our revenue, remember, this is talking about revenue, that's our revenue when x is zero. So let's look back to what x is again. x is the number of one dollar increases. So if x is zero, that means there's no one dollar increases. So um, if there's no increases, then what is the price that the tacos are? Four dollars, right? Because that's the original. So this means that um, 240 is the revenue, because that's what this whole thing is saying, it's the revenue when tacos are sold for four dollars because there's no increase. Okay, now let's double check this answer here because um, it's not quite right. So let's um, just take these, multiply them, and see if we get this answer. So this is your answer here. So if we were to multiply using FOIL, distributing the negative 7x, we get negative 7x squared, which is good so far. Negative 7x times positive 4 is negative 28x. Um, let me do this. Minus 60x minus 240. So we get negative 7x squared minus 88x minus 240. So not quite right, so it wouldn't be this one. So what you're going to do, you're going to go down the line and figure out, um, just by foiling them, which one will be correct. Now, one thing we need to note is that we need a positive 240 here. So um, remember, we get this number by multiplying the last one here and the last one here. Those have to be a positive, so it could be positive times positive positive times positive, but it can't be positive times negative, so it's going to be one of these two here. Okay, so this one's really cool because once we have the correct factors, um, we need to figure out what the factors actually mean, and so we're talking about a revenue problem here. So, oops, where am I? There you go. Revenue, <clears throat> the, um, the amount that you make um, is pretty much going to be what you multiply. You're going to multiply the um, the number of items sold times the price per item. Okay. So if you were to sell um, shirts at a yard sale, if you sold 20 shirts and they were each um, six dollars, then you would have made one hundred and twenty dollars. And so, when we're talking about our revenue problem here, we're going to end up with two factors. One is going to be the number of, in this case, tacos sold, and one is going to be the price per taco. So, once you have the correct um, factors from up here, you have to decide which one of them is representing the number of tacos sold, and which one is representing the price per taco. Okay, now for this one, we want to make sure that we have all of um, the information here and here correct. So um, the values, that's perfect. Now taco price, remember up at the top, it started at $4. We said when there was no increase, right, the increase was zero. Um, it was a $4 taco, and the average sold was 60 and then you would plug in zero into your equation to get that, which is good. Now, um, as we keep going, the taco price, remember, they're increasing by a dollar. So if it's four here, if it increases one time, um, then it'll be five and so on. 
And so all of the taco prices are going to be increasing by one. And now remember it said at the beginning the average number sold was it started at 60 and it was decreasing by seven every time. So these will, it'll be 60 and we're going to go down by seven each time here. And then for your revenue, you're going to be plugging all these numbers in for here. Okay, now for this one here, um, this guy sells watches and the expression 200x minus 300 over x models the average profit per watch sold where x is the number of watches sold. So if we go back to what I was saying, like, you know, the yard sale problem. Um, so say there was 20 shirts and they were each $5. Um, so revenue would be 20 times five. Um, oh, I did a different number there. But um, so that'd be $100. So now to find the cost that I'm selling that at, I could do $100, because that's how much I made, divided by the amount of them. And um, so my revenue divided by the number of items I sold means that each one was $5. And so you can do revenue equals this times this, or cost equals this divided by that, okay? So now, so this here is um, per, so this is the um, dollars that he's selling it per watch. This is the number of watches here. So if it asks you what does the numerator represent, um, that would be right here. Um, it would be like my $100, that would be the numerator. So my $100 in this case is how much money I made. So in this case for him, it's how much money, um, his whole revenue that he's selling for all of the watches. All right, part B is perfect, good job. Let's go down here to part C. Rewrite the expression as the sum of two fractions. So I could do, um, here's an example. Say I wanted to do um, a plus 3b over 7. I can rewrite that as the sum of two things, each with a denominator of 7. And we would just separate this. It would be a plus 3b. So you're going to do the same thing here. We can separate it as that over x and as that over x. And then it wants you to simplify. So now the only simplification that's here, let's delete this stuff, is once you do have 200x over x, what can happen right here? That's what you'll need to do to simplify. 